Could you tell us a little bit about what you and your family are doing in life right about now? Sure. We currently live um, in the D.C. area. But in the last 23 years that I've been married to my husband, as a he's an Army chaplain, we've moved 14 times. <laughs> so we've been all over the world. We have five children, um, all of whom are adopted, and we're in the middle of another adoption. That's a lot. It so, is a lot. Yeah. So tell us about your faith in the midst of all that. Early on, before we got married, God was so gracious to give me this perspective on His sovereignty through Ligonier's ministry and Ligonier's materials. I can't imagine living this life, walking this life for the last 23 years without a rock solid faith on His complete sovereignty in this world. Amen. And that enabled you to minister to other spouses. During a particularly difficult time, um, my husband deployed to Iraq twice. And the second deployment was hard. Um, we lost a lot of soldiers. And I was in, a, in Germany. And so when you're in Germany with the military, you're part of a general Protestant congregation. Right. And believers, people who love the Lord, but who don't share necessarily your um, Reformed perspective. Right. And I can remember very distinctly being in the midst of spouses, wives, because the husbands were all deployed, after a, a particularly hard um, you know, series of soldier deaths and being in the middle of this and realizing that my faith and the Reformed perspective, particularly about the sovereignty of God, that the world was not spinning out of control, that he, He's still on the throne, was different than everyone around me. And because of that, I had a peace that I was able to share, like we are comforted so that we can comfort others in Christ Jesus. And so um, it's been a huge, huge gift. He's sustaining the souls of service members and military families as they have this continuous existence of service. The military life presents challenges. Maybe you could explain that a little bit. Yes. So I think we often think of like combat deployments as, you know, the biggest, and they are. That's a huge stressor on a military family. But a couple of things that I certainly didn't think about till I was living it is, you know, after a combat deployment for years, you're living with uh, the impacts of that deployment on a person, on a human, on a soul that's going to live for right. eternity. And so, and I, like, I didn't count it up until today, but 14 moves in 23 years. Um, it's not just you're moving your house, you know, you're moving your community, your school, you know, all of these things that you kind of began to put down roots and then all of a sudden you're up and going again. Usually you have a Christian community, like maybe a general Protestant community, which is a blessing um, for sure. But many of those times you don't have a reformed community that's gonna be stable and solid um, for you to stand on as a family. And, and one more thing, um, even though the combat deployments have stopped, deployments haven't stopped. Family separations continue to go on and the stress that that puts on any relationship. But uh, you know, God, God didn't intend for children to be raised without fathers and, um, and so it's hard. What would you say to members of congregations about uh, how to treat those military families? Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna take an effort and to, to open your hearts to someone you know is gonna be gone. Um, would you welcome us? Um, and no, even though we're not gonna be there long, we need community, we need fellowship, especially our children. In what ways can the Ligonier community be praying for and support the military? But pray for families, um, relationships, military chaplains in different levels. That, of leadership? Of leadership. And influence? Yes, okay. and influence. And that um, they would have favor in, in the courts of the king, and um, in a sense. But primarily, like if you're talking to a mom, I want you to pray for our military families. Um, but so pray for our relationships, pray for those families who've lost a loved one, but also for those of us who are still, you know, walking this life, that we would do it well and do it, um, that we would honor God every step of the way.